this year marks the 10th anniversary of Madiba's passing in December 2013. And the Nelson Mandela Foundation has teamed this remembrance call to action as the legacy lives on through you. Nelson Mandela International Day is celebrated on 18th July every year to honor the first democratically elected president of South Africa, the late Nelson Mandela. This day was officially declared by the United Nations in November 2009 and celebrated in 2010 for the first time. The call to action for the Mandela International Day 2023 is climate, food, and solidarity, reflecting on some of the most urgent challenges people face worldwide. Today, we will explore how the core values of Giving Tuesday can be leveraged to create sustainable communities by addressing critical issues such as climate change, food security, and inequality. We discuss the importance of collective action, collaboration, and generosity in tackling these global problems. Welcome to the Ubuntu Giving Podcast. Welcome to the Ubuntu Giving Podcast, everyone. We are celebrating the power of generosity. We are celebrating collective action and co-creation to transform lives and communities across Africa. I am thrilled to have you join us once more on this episode. And today it's actually a special bonus episode where we are celebrating Mandela Day. I have with me here amazing guest, two guests actually, We have the honor of introducing Snare, who is the Giving Tuesday South Africa lead. And I also have with me here Ndando Makwela, a motivational speaker, an entrepreneur, player part ambassador, and author. I'm actually going to pass the mic to each of them so they kind of tell us who they are, what they do, and, you know, all of their achievements and successes. We want to hear them all. So Snare, over to you. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Bidimi. Me. Uh, my name is Sne Vilagazi, as you have introduced me, and I'm the Green Tuesday South Africa lead. Um, just in a nutshell about myself, I, I well, I'm a woman who, who, who is part of many initiatives. Uh, first and foremost, I, I run a a, a marketing communications agency called Guga Wanele. I am also a co-director in a nonprofit called Cody, which um, does career and organizational development um, within institutions. Um, but other than that, I am a person or a woman who is passionate about uh, driving change within my community and society. And so, I just do my bit and and do what I can with the skills that I have and the time that I have to advocate for for issues that are close to my heart. And that is basically me in a nutshell. Wow. It's amazing how so far all of the guests we've had are, you know, amazing people just wanting the world to be a better place. I mean, if we had a million stairs on the planet, gosh. (laughs) <laughs> probably would not have global crisis um so moving on to Ndando, please tell us about you what you do who you are everything we need to know yes thank you again for having me uh my name is Ndando Makwela as you said and I'm the author of the dynamic kid nine keys to unlock your future I'm also a player part ambassador for brand SA and my chief work is with the youth, helping them to find their purpose, helping them to find out what it is that they want to do and move forward into enriching their own lives. Amazing. Oh, my God. I mean, Andado, we need to speak after now. There's a lot we can do together. But let's let's dive Most into definitely. our... <laughs> yes. Let's dive into our generosity exercise, okay? Um, we have this this ritual you know here uh the open to giving podcast where we kind of ask our guests to tell us one or two things about what they do and you know we want everyone to sort of 
get a sneak peek into the lives of our amazing guests. So Snare, I'm going to ask you one question and Dado, I'm going to ask you another question. Snare, here is yours. If you had one superpower that could change this world, that could make this world a better place. I mean, mine would be, Lord, make me be like Snare, but what would be yours? Oh my gosh, if I had one superpower. Right. I I think it would have to be time. If I had all the time and if we had all the time in the world, I, I, I right. think you know we, we could get so much done. But also I'm saying that because you know when, when we think about all the pressures that we are facing and we're running out of time and um, our, our world is going up in flames and it seems as if there's not enough time to rectify all those issues. So I think I would have to say time for now because it's just the main thing that is on my mind that I wish I had more of. Right. I think I see what you mean here. Andando, mm-hmm. what is yours? If you had one superpower, what would it be? I think it would be omniscience. I would like to know everything in that way that I could solve all the problems that I see and I could help people with whatever issues they're facing. I think the most important thing we need is information, yeah. I mean, if there is an answer to every problem, right? Mm. But but there is an answer to every problem, really, if we look closely. (laughs) But I see what you mean and I see what, you know. Um, My next question what act of generosity have you received? And then I'm going to have you, you know, answer this first. Have you received that you have never forgotten? I think an act of generosity that I've received that I've never forgotten would be, I remember when I was, I think it was a few years ago, and we were doing talks with the the youth. So there was this event that was about to take place, a very good opportunity, not only for me to be there, but to spend time with other great leaders. And I remember that out of nowhere, I was speaking to one of the, the people at a previous event and he decided to sponsor me for the next event. So that's oh. definitely an act of kindness that I'll never forget. That is so sweet. Wow. Mm. Snail, what yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, for me, an act of there, there's so so many, but um, what came to my mind was when I approached um my now mentor. I I think I had uh, pitched a, a business idea to him, and I wanted to work uh, with his company or the company he was working for at that time, and I was very very junior uh in the in the world of entrepreneurship and I had big big dreams um not realizing how much work I still needed to put in um but I guess maybe I was just brave and 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 I I put myself out there but the way that he uh received me um my my mentor and his name is Dave McCullough the way that he received me and he gave me his time and he mentored me when he had no no push, right? He wasn't forced to do so um, as part of some kind of program, but he just realized that, you know, here's a young lady who's trying to 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 learn and grow and make something of herself. And he 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 gave me his time and his knowledge in the industry. And I would say that I definitely attribute a big part of where I am today to his um support um yeah do you know guys that so far we've had guests share you know acts of generosity they haven't forgotten and (laughs) it's funny how none of them were actually financial in nature you know it's either someone helping out, someone doing this, someone opening doors of opportunities, someone sharing information. It's beautiful how we are now contextualizing what generosity truly means. And I always look forward to this part of this podcast, to be honest. Now to the main agenda. <laughs> Let's dive into climate change, food security, inequality. I mean, it's 
I don't know why this is the call to action for this year, climate change, food security, inequality. How do they intersect? Why is it crucial mm. to address them together on this day? I think really we've seen kind of the effects of climate change. Um, Africa is known for having areas that are struck by famine and food insecurity. But now that the West is kind of experiencing that, there is this call to action that, you know, uh, climate change is truly a global problem, something that we need to deal with as a as a global uh, initiative. And I think food, food insecurity is one of the things that hits home at the African challenge because, right. you know, one of our rights, one of our indelible human rights is the right to food and food security is a big part of being a human being, especially in today's civilization. Many of us who do live in more fortunate uh, classes kind of take food security as a given. You know, we expect that when we go to the store, we'll be able to buy what we need and we'll be able to yeah. nourish ourselves. But in yeah. order for people outside to have those same rights and for them to be treated in the way that they should be treated, that kind of... Uh, privilege needs to be extended on to the less fortunate as well in our country and throughout Africa. Right, right. Sna, what are your thoughts on this? Would you like to comment? I I, I echo Dando's sentiments. Um, the, these three items are, I would say, a basic human right, um, and there is none of them um, which is more important than than the other. I mean, mm. we, it, it, they're part of the SDG goals, you know, which we are still a, a far way off from achieving as um, as a continent um, and as and as the world. And I know that Africa definitely, unfortunately, we bear the the, the full brunt um, of the challenges of climate change um you know as Danda mentioned a lot of the um damage I guess happens in the industrialized west whereas um Africa is heavily reliant on on, on agriculture as a, a form of, of of you know sustenance uh, within food production and so when you see the results of of climate change or global warming we we feel it the most mm -hmm. right and 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 then these challenges are, are, are climate change and, and food insecurity they exacerbate the inequality amongst um us as people so the gap widens and and it it, it, it gets even bigger and it's a vicious cycle you know so we need to address each of them at the same time because they are inextricably linked um actually so when you solve right. one you're touching on solving um the other right so, right I, I, mm, mm. I see i mean um a quick reminder that the topic of this podcast is building sustainable mm. communities you know while addressing mm. climate change food security and inequality inequality yeah. so let, let's talk about you know, how Giving Tuesday plays a part, you know, in building sustainable communities. What values do you think you can really relate to, you know, of Giving Tuesday that can help the align with the goal of building sustainable communities? And Dado, would you like to speak and then we hear from Snare and then we take it up? Yes, no problem. I, I think the idea of Giving Tuesday really lends towards helping uh, situations like this because it shows that people who do have have a role to play in helping those who do not have. And mm. that act of kindness reinstates the human bond that we all share since we all are part of this one world and those who have should be able to give what they have to those who do not have. And Giving Tuesday also, uh, especially from what I remember from the panel discussion that we had, I think a few days ago, two days ago now, is that everyone plays a part in it. Individuals can play a part in it. Organizations can play a part in it. Communities can play a part in it because it puts the 
responsibility on each and every single one of our doorsteps to right. contribute what we can. And I believe that it does cultivate a virtue that sees giving not just as a thing that we do, you know, uh, as maybe a formality, but something that comes from within a, a deep understanding of the importance of giving and what giving can do to others. Right. Um, so there you are the giving Tuesday lead for South Africa. So I want to, I believe strongly based on the structure that you have, um, GT South Africa is doing amazing work. And, you know, we just concluded the 67 minutes of generosity webinar. Would you like to share, you know, yeah. some strategies, you know, that one can learn Right, from giving to South Africa, for example, that can help us achieve our goal of building sustainable communities? Sure. Um, so I think it, it's important to first um, explain or mention what these these uh, values are. So right. giving to the values are generosity, empathy, uh, collaboration, and rallying people together um, or rallying civic engagement uh, towards addressing issues that we, we face as, as, as communities. And the truth of the matter really is that nobody can, can, can do anything alone, right? We have right. got very large populations within our, our communities and, and countries. And can you imagine if everybody was doing their little thing in a corner, um, we, we, we wouldn't get anywhere. And so when you think about it, these are the values of Giving Tuesday and then these are the values that we need to practice um, as, as, as societies to, to, to bring about change. Um, so for example, when you are generous, um, you can be generous with your time. You can be generous with your resources or your skills. So that means I have an opportunity um, as near the individual to give my time to towards the cause that I care about. If I am a corporate, it means I can be generous by running a CSI initiative where I give or provide resources to a particular cause in a community. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter who you, if you're a nonprofit, you know, your day-to-day -day running is you um, giving your, your, your time and resources towards the cause. So that really speaks to, 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 to generosity, to the value of generosity. Um, and then when we speak about collaboration, um, that's once again, an individual, a nonprofit, a corporate joining together in conversations like the ones we are having now and saying with my capability and what I can do, um, what, can, what, you know, what can I bring to the table so that collectively we bring different skill sets and, and different attributes to make um, you know, one big cake. So for example, I see it as, as bringing different ingredients to bake a cake. Right. Um, that's the power of collaboration at the end of the day when each person comes with, with what they have, you have something beautiful, or in this case, something effective um, that, that you, 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 you produce to solve a, a, a particular issue. And, and so, you know, once one person does something, it, there's a ripple effect that you see within communities and you get inspired as well when you see somebody doing something. There's just something about, doing good that makes your heart leap no matter who you are because I do believe we're intrinsically good and so when you do something and that a person sees you doing it they get inspired to do it as well and so it, it grows and it grows and it grows and I, I think then this is in essence why why we why we do what we do yeah I completely agree, Snow. Um, soon to come, everyone listening um, at this moment. So there was something I did not mention while we were, you know, while we were doing the generosity exercise. You get to also ask me one question, each of you, <laughs> at the end of this episode. So start thinking, start preparing to ask me anything at all that you think you'd love to know or you feel like the world would love to know about me. I've asked you two questions, <laughs> but you only get to ask me. <laughs> you only get to ask me one. 
Um, okay, awesome. Yeah. So moving on, let's let's highlight or permit me to use the word spotlight some examples. Okay. So on that though, I would love you to share with me one example of an organization or an individual or a community that is doing good work, you know, in climate change and food security or inequality, or three of them all at once, if if you know anyone that you can think of. And then Sne, I would also love you to, you know, um spotlight you know someone doing good work and let's hear let people know you know someone they can relate with if they would love to you know start doing things like this i can say from experience um i had i went to a talk i think uh last week or so uh there was a there was an education committee there called km i forget the full name but they are really doing great work to help with the inequality especially in the education space they're really trying to give children who are in disadvantaged communities an extra chance with extra studies and extra lessons that are affordable that they are able to tap into in order for them to also grow their own academic uh, aspirations. I mean, there are the bigger organizations, I'm sure, you know, Nelson Mandela's foundation as well, Trevor Noah Foundation, even I also had some experience with the Rotary Club. Um, throughout South Africa, they do great work as well. So there are many foundations out there that are doing great work. Amazing, amazing. Snell, let's hear from you. This is a very difficult one for me because yes, there there's so there's so many uh, nonprofits that are that are that are doing great work. But I mean, I know that this is a larger uh, nonprofit that you, you you guys might already know of, which is Gift of the Givers. You know, every time I'm watching on the news or I'm listening to the news. Um, hearing about the latest natural disaster that has happened, whether it is um, uh, the floods that we recently, well, not recently, because it was last year um, in KZN in South Africa, um, we experienced floods and, and more recently there was a, I think we had some kind of a water crisis, but every time um, the name Gift of the Givers always pops up and I, I just want to give them props for the work that they do. Um, they, they, yes, they, they're ama an amazing entity, but yes, I can name so many nonprofits that, that, that do great work, um, but I'll just spotlight one for now. Thank you so much. Um, I think we are getting to the end of this podcast. <laughs> and uh, I think my last question is, you know, steps listeners can take to support. Now you've shared with us some examples. So I'm sure some of some of you can go check them out online, see what they do, you know, celebrate what they do. But what steps, what practical steps can our listeners take to support and participate in initiatives or even come up, you know, create their own initiatives that addresses climate change and food security and inequality in their communities? Um, Snare, I think would love to hear from you. <laughs> Okay, for sure. As I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this podcast, for example, I'll speak for my myself. Um, earlier this year, I, myself and two of my other colleagues, we resuscitated a, non resuscitated a nonprofit called Cody, which um, speaks to the challenge, you know, of, of climate change in particular. In fact, we are in conversations with um, Brand South Africa around an initiative where we work with young people in, in high schools and we, we train them on how to become active citizenships, particular, particularly around the, the issue of addressing um, climate change. But then we, we, we 
within the program, we spotlight um, different aspects of humanity, such as like empathy, creativity, communication, collaboration, and all those things. And we've packaged it as a solution um, for, 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 for kids um, or as a guide for kids to use as they come up with ideas on how they can um, tackle the, the climate crisis. Um, and then towards the end, there's a competition where uh, we will evaluate the different prototypes for ideas that they've come up with to see who has, um, you know, come up with the best idea, even though in essence, everybody will come up with something great. So, you know, th this is just an example of what what you can do as, as an individual, maybe a different idea, but if you look at the community that you currently reside in and you look at a, a, a current challenge, which is in your eyes, see what's around you, close to you, who can you talk to? And then surely something will, will spark an idea in your mind um, and you will just go out there and, 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 and execute it. Wow. That's amazing, Snake. God, how do you do all these things? Is there anything you cannot do? <laughs> <sighs> we oh do my our God. best to be, to, be, to be honest. I mean, what what can we do, uh, bit of me? What can we do except <laughs> except just try? I know, but you're doing amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Undado, let's hear from you. You know, some steps. You could share what you're currently doing or anything at all you feel can be of value. Yes, uh, I do believe that uh, individuals can definitely take uh, a few steps, you know, especially when it comes to things like food security. Um, with food banks, there are food banks throughout the country that you can donate to, whether it's even starting your own in your own community, I do believe is important especially for things like food security. What I usually do is uh, I usually spend a lot of time with youth, training them up in how they can, you know, not only be better people, but how they can grow their own attributes so that one day they are able to contribute. So I definitely do work like that, especially with the uh, brand essay and things like snares project would be where I would consider entering in, but to individuals, I think the the a lot of misconceptions that we have is that, you know, no one is solving solutions or no one is there that can help or no one is there that sees the same problem that you do. But I do think that doing your research, finding initiatives that correspond mm -hmm. with causes that you believe in is something that you can do that can make a very big impact. Absolutely, absolutely. And now we are <laughs> at the segment of this podcast where you both get to ask me just one question. So, um, and Dando, you can start. Ask me one question and then Snake can do the same and then we are done for the day. <laughs> okay. Uh, my question to you would be, if you were to go back to high school and there was a sports day in your school, which sport would you represent your school in and why? Mm, honestly, it would be chess. I just feel like people who play chess are amazing. Like, God, why? I, I, and I don't know how to play chess. So I know you were expecting something like basketball, football, volleyball. Yes, yeah. yes, I was expecting something like that. Yes, the only kind I I I love um things that kind of work my brain. <laughs> I love brain exercise. Nah, I hear you. So, yeah, it would be chess. I mean, there that, are that's a good on answer. Chess. Yeah, that's a good answer. Competitions on it, so. <laughs> um, snare. Please be considerate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was trying to not be uh, typical, but I, I'd love to know so many things about you, but maybe my question would be, <laughs> uh, okay, I will go easy on you. What is one item that is still on your bucket list of things to achieve in your life? 
one item mm -hmm. i would love a chance i'm sorry i think i keep hearing a a notification like someone's whatsapp is it me i think it's me oh damn it okay desire please cut that like the last 30 seconds please cut it out of this episode let me answer this next question Snake, can you repeat the question again? Apologies. Okay. Please share one item. Um, okay. So please share one thing that is in your bucket list, which yes. you would like to achieve in your lifetime. Or do. Mm. Achieve or do. Honestly, I would love to And it to can be to... serious or fun. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> okay great <laughs> i would love to go to venice i would mm. love to go to the vatican i'd love to go to scotland i just feel like scotland is a place that is rich in culture and i want to see something that is different really different from what i know you know about africa for example let me be wowed and surprised by <sighs> A culture that is completely different from mine you know so yeah that's yeah. something that is on my bucket list very interesting very interesting i, I wouldn't have guessed <laughs> no we know. could make it a girl's trip so we can go together yeah. oh. <laughs> okay, great and i'd love to see some men in kilt that would be great <laughs> Thank you so much, okay. guys. Thank you so much for making this podcast fun and amazing. Um, as Thank we conclude you. this episode, yes, it is clear that challenges of climate change, food security, and inequality require collective action, a spirit of generosity to create lasting change. And today, being Nelson Mandela International Day reminds us of the power we hold to shape a better future. Thank you for tuning into this episode. We hope it has inspired you to embrace generosity. We hope it has inspired you to take action. And until next time, let us continue to live by the words of our father, Nelson Mandela. For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chain, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Bye, everyone.